Welcome, everyone, to episode 17. How's it going? I'm your host, Trinidad Mora, with the Dental Advocate, where the dental assistant life feeds from experience and unity. So uh, it's great to be here tonight, guys. As always, you know, being able to do this is a privilege, and I, I just wanted to express my gratitude to Silly Panda Media, Vinoholics, and The Blacksmith uh, for being here to support me. Um, always, always. So what, what do patients think about on their first visit to the office? Um, I, I know at, at some point or another in some of my other episodes, I mentioned a couple things about this, but I'm going to go a little more in depth about some of the things that I say to try and put my patients at ease or, or comfort, uh, specifically um, more geared towards to give them a little confidence of what we do in the office and who we are. So um, I know also uh, at some point in my career, I felt that I, that I needed to help the, the office show patients that this is their office for them. You know, obviously, if they're not, a, if they're not a-holes, you know, most, some, some of them come in and they're just they're crazy mean. And uh, so today I wanted to talk about some of those conversations that I have with my patients. Um, some of the things that I thought about was... Uh, you know, going in as, as a patient for the first time to an office, I mean, there's a lot that revolves around it, but I'm just really going to concentrate on, on these, these, uh, these things here. So everyone's uh, probably thinking, do I believe them? Do I trust them? And did I get treated well, taken care of, not forgotten? You know, are they going to come back? Um, did they wait too long? I mean, I think all of those things are mo kind of at the core when they first come in. Do, do I believe them? Do I trust them? If they don't trust you, they're not going to say yes to anything. If, you know, if they don't believe you, same thing. You know, no one's going no to spend their money or, or even take the time to have an a authentic conversation with you about their treatment if they, don't, if they don't believe you or if they don't trust you. So... I kind of concentrate on that when I have a new patient that I'm taking x-rays on. And um, one of the things that I, that I really touch on is um, what do they do for a living? So, you know, them doing certain things for a living kind of gives you a foundation or idea of how they think. Um, you know, if they're construction workers, they're going to think of how things are put together. If they're, you know, engineers also. So it just kind of gives you an idea, you know, if they have a scientific background or, you know, whatever. Whatever it may be, it just gives you kind of a little background on, on who they are. Um, you know, get to know them a little bit before you start to, to tell them about how great your office is. And uh, for me, all this info sets the way I will talk to them. Um, so... As far as past experience in dentistry, you know, I asked them if they ever had any bad experiences. And some will go on forever telling you bad-mouthing the last office and the last doctor and the last assistant and all this. I'm not really looking to hear the whole story. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of picking out uh, the do's and don'ts. So I pick out the do's and don'ts, and um, I, it's almost like, like you're asking for a, a cheat sheet you know, um, on, on how to treat them. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because um, in any relationship, you kind of set your, your, your grounds as to how you want to be treated. And I think that's, that's really cool for, for patients. Sometimes it's things that maybe um, they didn't understand. You know, some situation happened. Oh, they charged me too much. Or, you know, something happened. Oh, they had to send the, the crown back because they got the shade wrong. Well, those things happen. You know, I always explain to them, well, you know, that happens to us, too. You know, um, it, it, it could happen in any office. So, you, you know, you try to reason with them and figure out what went wrong in the last time that, that they went to a dentist. It could have been that nothing was wrong. You know, maybe they, their, their last dentist passed away or uh, they just moved, you know, and they love their dentist. So figure that out because if they love their dentist, um, you got some big shoes to fill, that's for sure. Um, you know, I know plenty of offices that don't, they don't really care to ask for this information because they're probably not very, uh, uh, patient oriented or just 
they just don't think of asking. They're too busy with other tasks and, you know, things that are going on in the office. My, my doctor meets with all our new patients. Like when they first come in, they sign up and um, to start the process, they, 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 make a, they try to make a connection. Um, the next question that I asked them, I think my doctor asked them when she talks to them, but uh, I asked them anyway also because I, I, I want to know. So I always ask them, how did you find us? And to me, that gives me a real good idea of who they think we are because I know what is out there about our office online. So, I, you know, I, if you don't know what's out there about your office online, go online, Yelp, Yelp your office, Google it, whatever. And um, when people tell you, you know, where they seen you or how they figured you out, um, they'll tell you, oh, I saw you guys on Google, I saw you guys on Yelp, or my friend told me or whatever. And you kind of have an idea of what, what they know. Um, if they say my insurance, then they really, honestly, they have no expectations. Like, they don't know what they're walking into. They don't, they're just kind of there and checking you out and seeing what's going on. Um, if they say Yelp or some review site, then they know they have, <clears throat> then I know they have the expectation of being treated just as the way they read online. Like if someone just blew us up about something, um, they're going to walk in thinking that, that they're going to have the same experience. So that's, that's also some big shoes to fill. Uh, make sure you know what, what's out there about your, your office. If they say my friend or my relative comes here, I, want, um, I wanted to give you guys a try. Then the expectations to me in that situation, they're higher. Because someone personally told them to come here and told them how well of an experience, how well they were treated. So those expectations to me are always a little bit higher. Um, because someone, someone gave them a story of how, how great we are and just kind of, you know, passed on the confidence and the trust already for us. So, you know, show them that the story is true. Um, all I got to do is be myself and take care of them, really. You know, um, to me, that, that, those, are, those are easier because they already know. Um, not to say that, you know, anybody will be treated according to how they found us, but definitely it gives you a good idea of how much of a, of a uh, I call it a confidence bomb, how much of a confidence bomb you got to drop. So I start with telling them a little bit about myself and how long I, I've been in the industry before I start saying anything about the office. And the reason is because um, you want to add a little bit of weight to what you're saying. So you don't want to just start spewing out information and they know nothing about you. You know, try to get a little connection first. And then when you when you start to talk and tell them a little about the office, they're more willing to listen because uh, you already got some kind of connection. So, um, you know, I tell them I have worked with uh, with the good, the bad and and the ugly. I tell them that I take a lot of pride in what I do. They, they really enjoy that. I have really you know, they they really uh, ate that up a lot. And I do. I really enjoy I enjoy what I do. Sometimes I say a little bit more. Um, but it's because I want to give my words, like I said, some weight. Um, I don't talk too much. I let them talk more than I do, but I, I let them know about all that stuff. Um, and I, I actually have a story uh, for my patients of why I continue to work there. Um, and they, they really like that too. And, it, and all of those things together kind of add up to that confidence bomb I'm talking about so um, you know I I tell them I bring my friends my family in for treatment uh, I don't have a problem telling them that our office is is uh, is is ethical and likes to do the right thing you know let them know tell them you know that they they want to have a real talk about about a place they're gonna have their body worked on you know <clears throat> I tell them that our doctors are honest. They don't overdiagnose unless, it's a, unless you know, the patient wants to request veneers or whatever. We'll, we'll talk to them. We'll mention it to them. But we don't, we don't push or use scare tactics or uh, pressure them into starting treatment. Um, I know not offices run that way. Uh, so it's, it's a little tough to say that, you know, 
you should say certain things or do certain things. This is just how it works in my office with me. You know, whatever you take away from this for yourself, that's great. Um, but I know offices are all different, and you can't you can't use the same stuff uh, in all offices, especially if you have a crazy busy office. Uh, yeah, I've been in some crazy offices where they just don't they don't really care. Um, and I straight up tell them, you know, we're not perfect, and we always fix uh, any mistakes within what's uh, reasonable and fair. Most of this I, I say before my doctor does her exam. Before my doctor does her exam, I, I kind of get a little bit of all this in there. And um, so I have maybe like 20, 30 minutes, you know, doing the FMX, the panel, the photos, which is what we do in our office for, for, for first patient. And all of that stuff, uh, it kind of adds up and it gives the patients a real good idea <clears throat> of who you are and what the office is. I only uh, give them the most info when I can tell they are skeptical about about dentistry, really. Because most patients that walk in, if you think about it, they're not skeptical about your doctor or your office. It's the industry itself because they've either had a bad experience somewhere or they hear bad things. So it's not like they walked in knowing, oh, this this doctor's bad or this office is bad. Otherwise, they wouldn't have walked in, right? But they're just a little bit on the on the on the defense because they haven't had anyone treat them well or or they had a bad experience somewhere <clears throat> so just remember it's not necessarily your office or your doctor that they don't trust it's it's the industry really so they just um they just need someone to show them that uh they they can they can change into good patients <laughs> you know i i actually don't say very much ever about uh my doctor's uh schooling or or what other high achievements uh you know, the doctors may have. If they ask, I'll, I'll gladly tell them. But I, I want patients to believe in the things that we do. Uh, the things that we do start with a, a solid foundation of ethics. And I can't tell you enough how some of my patients will tell us how much, how much they love us and how much they love our work, even though they have no idea, like, what we're doing in their mouth. You know, as long as it feels right, it looks right, and like they're just like, oh, this is awesome, you know. Like they have no idea. So, but but that just goes to show that it, there's that trust. You know what I mean? That trust. So, you know, laying down that that foundation of trust is is very important. Um, and it comes down to that connection, because that connection that you have, you you pass it on to your doctor, you know, before before the exam. So all that you 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 manage to do. Once the doctor comes in for the exam, the patients are already kind of like, all right, you know, like I kind of know where I'm at with these people in this office. And, you know, uh, either they like you, they don't like you, they're going to come back or they don't trust you, whatever. You know, maybe you were talking too fast and you were nervous and they thought like you were shady. I don't know. Who knows? But, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, uh, if, if you did well, because they're going to schedule and do work. Right. Um, so sometimes. My doctor doesn't even know the things that I've said. Like, I don't really tell her, like, what I say to patients. Once in a while, I do. But uh, I don't really tell her in, any of the stuff that I, that I say unless we get into a conversation about it. So what happens is sometimes she'll just prance into the operatory, and she does her thing, and the patient starts, and she's like, ooh, I'm great. <laughs> you know, but what I've, what I've really done is, um, is listen to the patient and I've connected to them, and I've established some kind of trust, um, and I've managed to kind of break down that barrier of the awkwardness or break down the ice so that when my doctor walks in, they're relaxed and, you know, they're, they're talking, they trust us. Um, and I, I know I'm telling you and I'm giving you, like, this ideal situation, but that's the situation that I enjoy when it happens because it doesn't happen with every patient. And I don't get to tell every patient everything that I'm telling you. But if you can take some of that and instill it into some of your patients, it's a really good way to prep the patient for your doctor and so that the, the patient has uh, trust and confidence in the office. Um, so the best time to, 
to break the the ice in my opinion is before the exam because once the diagnosis is done um if you're trying to explain treatment and break down the barriers and break the ice all at the same time it i've seen those conversations and they don't go very well um meaning they start asking about money you know and when you when a patient starts asking about money and you're trying to break break the ice and those barriers it just it's too much in one conversation so you know i always like to kind of get it get it going in the x-ray room and then when i'm taking photos in the operatory which is what we do um so you know we can make a huge difference in how patients perceive our office i know some of us are not in the ideal environment to to brag or show off of, of what your office or your doctor does but you can still let them know how excited you are about what you do you know tell them what you want to learn tell them your story tell them how you got into dentistry or you know let them know how excited you are about what you do um i got I got something for you guys. So before we come to a close, I I wanted to mention that next week I have a special guest. Uh, she's a specialty assistant in oral surgery. So keep an eye out. I'll be introducing her this week in a post. And the other thing I wanted to let you guys know is I've collaborated with a few assistants uh, from Instagram that I have really come to enjoy communicating and laughing with for the past few months. And uh, it's a really awesome group of assistants. And, and also, you know, they have some good content for you guys to check them out. So we decided that we should um, show some gratitude to you guys. And we're going to do a giveaway. So uh, watch out this Friday, a post of the grand prize and the rules coming up on Friday. Okay? So don't miss out, you guys. Um, so thank you all for tuning in tonight. Please share the video, tag an assistant, and hit the like button. And I'll see you guys next week. Well, actually, this Friday, watch out for that post. And I'll see you guys next week. So, you know, as always, keep it positive And may your suction never fail you. Peace out.